Now, good evening to one and all, like, and uh, taking ahead with uh, Dr. Prasanna's presentation that we need quality, attitude. Uh, so now we are moving towards uh, competency-based education. So I will be talking about this uh, with, you know, this is little technical, but now with NEP 2020 and the new curriculum framework, we are going towards uh, the competency-based education. So when we talk about competency-based education, it is an outcome-based approach to education. When, uh, where, wherein we ensure that, you know, learning by students through demonstration of the knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes, which are required for dealing with real life situation at the age and grade appropriately. And this is an approach actually, which empowers the learners and allows them to learn at their own pace. So CBE, when we talk about competency-based education, it is personalized, flexible, and unique to each learner. And it helps in acquiring the skills for lifelong success. So when I'm talking about CBE, so it is a changing paradigm. So now, you know, credit R has been changed to content mastery. Focus on teaching has been shifted to focus on learning. So time is constant and learning is variable. The time is variable and learning is constant now. So greater focus on employer input regarding knowledge, skill and aptitude needs of future employees. Okay, so when we talk about this, one minute. So then actually I've given a pick as competency-based assessment. But education has two parts. Competency-based education model, when we take it has two forms. So one is competency framework and other one is competency assessment. So when we talk about education, competency assessment is the second part of it. So the competency framework consists of which describes actually the skills, abilities and knowledge which is needed to perform a specific task. And competencies, when we talk about the competencies, it must be clearly defined, measurable, related to the knowledge or skills needed for the future endeavors, such as additional education or employment. When we talk about NEP 2020, it talks about the multiple, you know, multiple disciplines and integrated approach. So second common element of CB is competency assessment because competency assessment are used to determine mastery and award credit. Okay. So... When we talk about competency-based assessment, it has certain steps. So first, we need to identify the competencies. When we are identifying the competencies, we need to analyze the curriculum as well as we need to identify the knowledge, skills, and abilities which are needed for success in particular field or the profession. So when we talk about the second criteria, once the competencies have been identified, the next step is to develop the assessment criteria. And when we talk about the criteria, this will be used to measure students' performance against uh, those competencies. So here, you know, we can create the rubrics, checklists, or other scoring tools that clearly define what is expected out of the students. Now we are giving the assignments to the students and we don't tell them what we are expecting. What is the benchmark? Once they get the rubric and all those things, they will be knowing that what is what is that which is required to get mastery in that. So rubrics plays very important role when we talk about assessment criteria. Once this step is over, then we gather the uh, evidence. Such as, you know, gathering the evidence means we collect the test projects presentation. And then based on that, we evaluate the performance. And based on that, we give the feedback. Feedback on their performance which includes areas where they demonstrate competencies and areas where they need the further development. So these are the different steps of competency-based assessment. Okay, so competency-based assessment, I'm talking about in higher education, it is designed to provide a clear objective, clear and objective measure of students' performance against the specific competencies. Because when we talk about the competency-based assessment, it is related to learning outcome as well. And nowadays, NEP talked about, talks about outcome-based education. So we talk about POs, COs, uh, and the mapping of POs and COs. So we need to master the specific competencies rather than completing a certain number of courses or credits. Okay, so this ensures that students are, you know, 
truly prepared for the workforce okay so next when i talk about uh, how the assessment work so simple diagram i have given here uh, you can see it start with the self assessment and once the self assessment it is followed by the assessor review then from the learners development needs are identified with which a development plan is created and next step is whether you can give on or on or off the job training with a proven demonstration of skills attained and in many cases there is a room for reassessment to better the learning so this is you know how this is the way the assessment works when we talk about uh, self assessment uh, so there are different tools for it so we can have you know interviews case studies questionnaires test and then projects and assignments again uh, when i talk about this uh, tools it can be you know competency library online assessment mechanism then multi iterative assessment or 360 degree feedback then reporting then linking learning suggestion for competencies group analysis and then historical training so these are different tools so i can give you one example you know uh, in rural district where access is an issue and students of all ages have a wide variety of needs creating one size fit for all classes or tracks that meet everyone needs can be impractical and inefficient so individualized and flexible approach of cbe provides the teachers specialists and mentors a clear picture of how to add up instructions whether a student is at home in school or on the job this is a classic example you know of uh, uh, cb so when we talk about the benefits of competency based education or assessment uh, then uh, i can uh, tell you you know students it is really useful because student will get personalized method individual play based specific needs meaningful assessment positive learning experience uh, then differentiated support and development of uh, broad skills so this is useful a cb is useful for teachers also because teachers gets more freedom for teacher support early intervention of students need provision for more collaboration then we have positive assessment we have flexibility in time and broader use of teacher skills and uh, when i talk about you know society also it is really useful when we are using competency based education because here we can have dual dual uh, enrollment and early college learning within the local community skilled worker prepared for employment increased productivity and decreased cost of education so this way you know we can have uh, 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 competency based education and which will be helpful for teachers students as well as the society so this is a new trend and even with nep 2020 we are going ahead with uh, you know uh, with competency based education which involves assessment also and with competency based education we can have uh, output uh, outcome based education with poco mapping thank you so much yes. for giving me this